Now to Hertfordshire to meet one of the world's leading experts on the classic of all classics, the sporting vintage Bentley. His name is Stanley Mann. His is not so much a business, not even so much an obsession. It's more of a reverence. Stanley takes just one day off a week from selling, restoring and maintaining vintage Bentleys, and that's usually to go racing in one. The Bentley store has gone from riches to rags and back again. The value of a Bentley, when it was bought new, cost probably three times the price of a house. By the mid-1930s, they weren't worth the price of a road fund licence. So a big Bentley with a £70 a year road fund licence, nobody would buy it. The interesting thing is that they weren't thrown away. So out of 3,000 that produced, we've still got over 1,000 of them left. When the Depression came, no one wanted Bentleys. Walter Bentley lost the company to Rolls-Royce in 1932. The Bentley era had been the Roaring Twenties. I think for these boys, it definitely was very roaring. The young, in brackets, Bentley boys, playboys, were a period and a time, and they were going to happen. They would have at least two or three Bentleys each. These were extremely wealthy people. The stock market was growing by the day, and their Bentleys were going to be the fun they were going to have and the racers were absolutely suited to what they wanted. They were going to run at Le Mans, they were going to go and play in the south of France, and this car was going to do it for them. Wolf Bonato on the right and Tim Birkin on the left, and all the young Bentley boys not only took Le Mans by storm, their money had kept Bentley going. In a way, history's repeating itself. And the best news that's happened in the last 12 to 14 weeks is that 70% of our sales have gone to people of 35 and under. So there's a new age group, not just the baby boomers, that want these cars. And the thing will go on and on and on, which is fabulous. I've spent much of my working life absorbing the smell and character of a racing workshop. But Stanley's place is very special. The racing cars here are part of motoring heritage. This supercharged Bentley lost the first owner when he was killed racing it. The third owner ferried secret wartime documents about in South Africa. The second owner had abandoned it in the desert for five years. The car was leading this eight-day race by about 25 minutes when an oil pipe fell off. When the car was picked up, the body had been completely eaten by white ants. Bentleys are often rebuilt ones. Here's another hero, Old Mother Gun. Yep, wins Le Mans in 1928, looking very much like all the other vintage Bentleys, Le Mans style that we've got. By 1937, metamorphosed into this with its new racing body, won the last race at Brooklands, and it's still capable of 150 miles an hour. With engines from three to eight litres, old Bentleys are still the toughest competitors. And although they're worth well into six figures, they're often used hard. This one's back from racing 4,000 miles across India and is here for a routine service. It carries the distinctive Vanden Plas coachwork. Of all the Bentley coach builders, they define the 20s sports car. And it's what they used to look like. It's got the classic, classic look. It's bulletproof, built for all idiots like me, born again virgin mechanics. I think you ought to try one. Get into first gear, press the clutch all the way to the floor. Yeah. Second, third and top, only use the clutch halfway and remember to double the clutch, right? <laughs> the only lever is here that I want you to worry about. If we stop the engine or you stall it, we have to yeah. fully retard. Okay. Otherwise, we'll run in the half advanced retard position. Right. And if you feel really cocky, we'll move it up to full right. advance. And will you remind me at all times that the brake is on the right? No. <laughs> I don't think any amount of driving actually quite prepares you for this sort of motoring, does it? No, this is pure fun. This is the most fun you can have with your clothes on. Ooh. All right, all right. But there's no synchromesh. The throttle pedal's in the middle and the gear lever's on the right. And the car's worth the price of a semi-detached. So be fair. It's just a tremendously mechanical experience, the whole thing. You know, from setting your ignition to releasing the handbrake and the gear lever is a real mechanical feeling. It's a, a direct link, isn't it, to the gearbox. Yeah. There's no bushes or linkages. It's absolutely straight on the gearbox. But the steering's actually quite light at speed, <coughs> isn't it? There's no weight on the steering. It will 
it will tend to start to run a bit heavy if you go hard into a corner. Yeah. Which is why we tend to throw the car into a corner when we're racing it. I don't think I've ever concentrated as much in all my life for oh, a really car. Oh, my knuckles haven't gone white yet. <laughs> This is the original long-distance GT. Half a million miles on the clock is nothing, and this 70-year-old is as superlative as the day it was made. Thanks for the drive, Stanley. The Sporting Bentley is surely one of the great cars of the century. If you dream about owning a McLaren F1 at £700,000, remember one thing. In the 1920s, this was its equivalent, and they sold one new every day.